Today, I'm asking just one simple question, and that is, when it comes down to your hard-earned cash, how far up the Jack Daniels spectrum do you really need to go? Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes today we're simply trying to find out how much do you need to spend to make it worth it as you go up the Jack Daniels range. This of course is not all of the different variations that the Jack Daniels distillery do. There are well actually historically probably hundreds at this point but I've picked three that I think kind of represent well the base, the middle and I'm going to say the top that most people can easily buy. There are definitely more expensive ones out there than this but this kind of represents their, I guess, towards the top of their everyday range, if that makes any sense. Uh, so yeah, obviously we've got the old number seven coming in at 40% ABV on the nose, the flat, the generic, the one that, well, let's be honest, if you're into your whiskey like me, these days it starts to look a little bit, well, subpar, let's, let's be fair. We've then got bottled in bond. Now this one is called Jack Daniels 100 bottle in bond. This is currently available under a slightly different name slightly different bottle in a lot of supermarkets especially here in the UK I'll pop a picture of that bottle on screen now so you can kind of identify it but in essence this whiskey is exactly the same as this whiskey or bourbon or Tennessee whiskey whatever you want to call it I know it, it is a bourbon but it's not but it's whiskey but it's not but anyway you get the idea this one is the same as this one except for the fact that it's bottled at 100 proof or 50 percent I have reviewed this before and to be honest it is alarmingly different from the number seven but that said i've never actually done them side by side so yeah it will be interesting to find out for sure and then of course we come over to the single barrel however the regular single barrel is actually a smidge weaker than this one at 50 percent but today as i said it's the more premium of the regular range and this is the single barrel barrel strength coming in at something ridiculous uh there you go 64.5 so if i start slurring towards the end of this video you know why now i probably should say i actually have quite a long history with jack daniels not a brand just as a consumer i drank far too much of this um well in my uh, late teens and in my 20s if i'm honest uh to the point where now it is just a bit boring that said there is a time and place where a jack and full fat coke just just hits the mark but i'll be honest i can almost always think of something i'd rather be having at that point these days so yeah this uh this bottle probably won't get drank very quickly at all even though there's not a huge amount left um and in addition to these, I do have a couple of other bottles, but one of note, which is this. This is another bottle of Jack Daniels single barrel, but this is the Silver Select. I received this as a gift on my 18th birthday, uh, which was a fair while ago now. And as you can see, there's not much left in it. It's probably completely oxidized. It's a waste, I know. I didn't know better at the time. This was years ago. And I'll have to say, it still smells fantastic, but the reason I purchased the bottle we're gonna look at today, the single barrel barrel strength, is because this bottle, I kind of want to last forever. Obviously we can't refill the whiskey that's in it, but we can create an infinity bottle out of it. So that will be a video that's coming I, was, I want to say very soon, but I feel like I've been saying that for six months. It is going to happen. I've just not decided exactly what to start it with yet, which is why I keep delaying it. So anyway, one to note. So then what we're going to do, I'm just going to give them a quick run through one at a time, a few individual notes, and then we'll go back and forth to try and work out exactly which one you should buy if, well, a bit of, I guess, the most iconic whiskey brand in the world is something you're after. Starting off with the old number seven, then this is a massive litre bottle of it. It hardly fits on the screen when I hold it up to the camera. You know the one, it's the square bottle. Anyone remember what year they actually changed these? Because they, they used to have like, they were square but had rounded corners and they went to this kind of kind of angular thing. I kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say I preferred the older bottles, but certainly at the time it was a bit of a odd move, but I guess still very much iconic. Right then, Glen Cairn, which seems, I'll be honest, overly fancy a glass for a not very fancy uh, whiskey, but here we go. 
We only need to do tiny amounts of these, of course, because we've got to get through a few samples. But in the glass, I mean, it's Jack Daniels number seven. There's not a lot of point in being overly artsy fartsy about this one. It's actually smells a hell of a lot better out of a Glen Ken than I actually remember. Um, it smells slightly sweet, but with a big old prickly bit of alcohol burn on the nose. It smells simple. It smells a bit ethanol -y, a bit... Yeah, just, just like pure alcohol, really. Very subtle char and caramel notes, but... You know, Jack Daniels is charcoal mellowed. It's meant to be a bit more refined in a way. Not sure that necessarily helps it on the number seven, but saying that, it's the most popular whiskey in the world, I think. So they clearly know what they're doing, even if it's not just for me. And yeah, there's a few kind of lighter fruit notes coming in, but kind of very small amounts of apple and pear, really nothing to write home about. So let's give it a go. Cheers. You know what's funny? I don't think I've ever, ever just sat down and considerately sipped some old number seven because let's be honest, it's often used as a mixer for good reason. Uh, I definitely occasionally take drank it straight kind of, you know, with heaps of ice or just when, well, yeah, kind of social settings, not really thinking about the thing you're drinking. And I have to say in very small doses, it actually has some really nice aspects to it. It's not very complex. It's a little bit still harsh in terms of the alcohol burn, but it is mellower than I thought it might be. Like caramel and notes, again, that were on the aroma. But the thing that really stands out about this, it's a bit of a savory nuttiness on the back end, which is a flavor profile I absolutely adore in whiskey, beer, anything, to be honest, that kind of umami, semi, isn't it kind of savory thing and otherwise, you know, something that's relatively sweet. Yeah, that, um, that actually, I'd say it's better than I thought, but it's still Jack Daniels number seven. There's not a lot to talk about if we're honest. So let's set this aside and get on to the next one which of course is the Bottled in Bond, or the Bonded, as I believe it's now called. As I said before, 50%. It's basically exactly the same thing. It's the same bottle. This is even a litre bottle, actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly the same size. I could have just read on the front of it. It is indeed a litre. Um, the reason that the labels changed, I think this, this was a travel exclusive, I want to say, then became kind of available. I think you can still buy this one in some dedicated whiskey shops in the UK, like with this frontage, but then they seem to change the label for supermarket stuff. I reckon because on a shelf, they're not that dissimilar, really. I mean, you know, we can spot the difference. There's clearly a few, but in general to the, you know, average consumer who's not paying too much attention, you could very easily pick that one up thinking you got that one. So maybe that's why, but just that's just my theory. I've got no idea if that's actually true. I say, I reviewed this not all that long ago and I remember it being quite pokey. Um, and I definitely don't remember any of that kind of peanutiness that we got from the number seven just now, but that was the first sip out the bottle. It may have changed a little bit. Yeah, it is distinctly different. I have to say it's got, I mean, much more alcohol, much more ethanol, but also we're creeping into a slightly heavier charred experience, almost a few kind of antibacterial notes. And it's definitely more complex. It's definitely more interesting. I'm not sure from the aroma that it's necessarily what I would want, but it's, it's, it's far from bad. So let's get into it. Cheers. Hmm. Okay. First thought is actually, despite the aroma being quite different, on the taste, not as far apart as I thought they were when I tried this the first time. It's, um, as with the number seven, it's true to its nose, or kind of the first part of the palette. You know, there's a little bit more of a char to it. There's a little bit more booze hit, actually a lot more booze hit. It's very spiky in the throat, but also it has got that slightly medicinal quality about it. Uh, but on the aftertaste, as the number seven, it has got this slightly dry, savoury thing. I can't remember in my review of this whether I picked up peanut or not, but having started at number seven and gone to this, there's definitely something there. I would, I'd be hard pressed to say 
it was absolutely nutty in the bonded or the bottled in bond or whatever we're calling it now but it's it, it's there but it kind of gets intertwined with some of those stronger bolder boozy notes so it becomes almost i don't know a bit and a burnt savoury biscuit almost if we're trying to pick out fancy words but you get the idea um right then so uh well there's not much left in that so i better add a splash to be able to come back to it one thing i did forget to do a glass of water 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 not a bottle of water no one says well they do say that but a glass of water sir a bit of water there just to cleanse the palate so you may also be thinking, why, you know, why these two? Why not some Gentleman Jack? Why not, uh, you know, one of the distiller series, something like that? Well, obviously, old number seven, or traditional number seven, or what it is called, old number seven, is just the de facto. Then we've got, as I said, the next one where we just had the bottled in bond, the bonded, is just the same thing, just bottled at higher proof. Now, the mash bill for a lot of their stuff is very much the same as it is with this, but the reason I've gone to this, firstly, is because the single barrel barrel strength, because obviously we're stepping up in ABV every time, which kind of helps the idea of, you know, elevating through, you're going through the price points. Um, I must say, actually, we'll come, we'll come back to price points in a moment, but um, they do change a lot, which is why I don't want to actually say them now, because this will probably come out a while after I've actually filmed it by, you know, a week or two. So they'll probably be wrong, but I will at some point hit prices on the bottles. In fact, let's, you know, let's let's do that right now. So um, just for reference, this now is what these are retailing at in the UK right now. Um, from memory at this point, uh, I'll probably put the prices up for the 70 centiliters, so they're all the same. Um, but from memory, I reckon, you know, a 70 centiliter old number seven is probably in the 20 to 25 pound range. I reckon that the bonded or bottled in bond is probably kind of 28 to 32. And if you're lucky, you can find this on kind of on offer on Amazon um in the kind of 60 pound range but i think otherwise it kind of shoots up more towards the 80 or 90 but anyway price on screen now because i'm probably talking absolute nonsense right then here we go then this is the big one jack daniels single barrel barrel strength um, i'm really looking forward to this i enjoyed my single barrel silver select immensely even as a young man who didn't really know what he was talking about. Not like I do now, of course, I should point that out. Uh, you might notice I'm getting slightly redder as this video goes on. Two reasons for that. One is booze. Second for that is that I have to close all the windows and stuff to try and help with external sound. I know the sound's still not great. I'm working on it, I promise. Uh, but also, you know, extra light and stuff from outside. So it's it's a bit of a sweat box in here. Uh, so I'm just gonna get slightly redder as this goes on. Now, let's get into this. This is unopened. So annoyingly, I actually bought this at auction, um, ended up paying the same price that Amazon then had it on offer for the next day, which is slightly annoying. When I bought it, it wasn't on offer, uh, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I haven't overpaid for it. I just, it wasn't the bargain I thought it was. So, but you know what? Never mind. It's unopened. It's uh, a perfectly good condition bottle. Came in a very nice box, actually. Um, so yeah, here we go. How good does this sound on opening? Well, that was disappointing. Oh, it does smell good, though. It does smell good. Now, obviously, you know, it's a single barrel. Not all of these will taste the same. Look how dark that is in comparison. Um, I didn't actually mention the, the visual on the bonded before, which was a bit of a mistake. So that bonded is there. Number seven is there. And I don't know if you can really tell, but the bonded is just kind of a few shades deeper and darker, as you would expect, because... Well, there's 10% less water in it. Uh, is it 10%? 10% 10 of the overall less water in it. Um, whereas that single barrel is a gorgeous, almost chestnut color. I mean, it is absolutely divine looking. Um, I'm very excited. You can probably tell. Now that's really interesting. It does have that very ethanol forward spiky Jack Daniels trademark that's in the other two. I don't think though it's as prominent. No, it's not. It's not as prominent as it is 
on the 50 percenter and this is a whopping 64.5 i can never remember because i know it's just a bit of an odd number but um yeah 64.5 percent and the ethanol the, the alcohol burn is lower than it is on the 50 percent which is wild but there is heaps and heaps of interesting notes on the nose unlike the other two it's a bit spicy a bit orangey a bit it smells how I imagine a lit Christingle would taste, which is an obscure reference. Um, uh, yeah, I'll just put a picture on the screen now. If you want to know more about it, I, you're just going to have to search the word because, uh, yeah, Christingle, it's um, a bizarre pastime to say the least. But uh, yeah, it's, it's got, you know, it's orange kind of dried raisins, dried grapes, dried raisins, dried grape, bib, 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 bib. You know, raisins, dried grapes, that sort of thing. Orange, a bit of spice, something a bit sweet. And a little bit of fiery, hence the lit version. Um, it's all quite dark and brooding, and I am incredibly excited to get into this one. So let's do it, shall we? Cheers. Well, that Christingle reference was a religious one, and I'm now having something of a divine intervention. That really is just worlds apart. I mean, first of all, the higher ABV, it is literally a more viscous liquid. It's thick, it's syrupy, it's got, I'll tell you what I am getting from it actually. Because of that heat intensity, firstly it just is a Jack Daniels trademark, but also the fact that this is 64.5%, you're getting big heat, along with a few spice notes, along with a huge amount of just kind of pure caramel treacle sweetness combined if i had hot honey because this is really what that's reminding me of it's yeah it's like chili infused honey which is in my opinion one of the greatest inventions ever made so oh yes it's got all the same notes i'll be honest that's one thing in these all of these it, that you don't often get in a lot of whiskies is that the the nose often is very different to the taste. There's normally kind of a few kickbacks, but overall it changes a lot between those kind of different sensors. Whereas with this, it stays very much as it, well, as you'd expect almost. I mean, sure, the impression is slightly different. Everything's, you know, some things are stronger, some things are weaker, but everything is there. You know what? After I've tried however many whiskies are sat there open behind me, um, I really thought, you know what, Jack Daniels, I'm probably not going to bother with again. It was kind of uh, my drink of choice for many years, my spirit of choice for many years. And I thought, you know what, I'm probably, I'm probably beyond that now. It's probably not worth it. But this just delivers. If you want something to warm you up on a cold day, which today is not, I am sweating, that is absolutely sublime. Now, I think it's pretty clear i like this a lot and these two are slightly better than i thought they were and that is about it but in the interest of fairness we will line all of these up and just kind of sip through them one at a time again just to make sure nothing's really changed so let's bring the water back so now having tried the others old number seven Aroma, still bland, still spiky. But any of the slightly overzealous, just, well, you know, ethanol notes on the flavor, because my tongue has been obliterated basically by, well, both of these, but in particular, the single barrel, all I'm getting now is just smooth sweetness followed with that nutty finish, which I'll be honest, it makes it delicious but it's just too simple, like it's just not, there's not enough to really go at. And I think maybe that's its problem in that, I think it's, you know, that spikiness I've been talking about the whole video, it's probably not really a problem. It's just that there's not enough other flavors to necessarily balance it and mask it a bit and whatever else. On the bonded, right now, I think that may even be worse than the number seven because whilst it has a bit more flavor throughout it's so much closer because of the abv i think to this even though there's a bigger step from the bonded to the single barrel barrel strength because i can't talk anymore um 
it's just that it's kind of being dulled down and it doesn't have the same intensity of that savoury thing at the end that the number seven does that you know what it's quite smooth but other than that eh and i can tell you from experience when you've not tried any other whiskey before this one smooth is not how i'd describe it so you know there's definitely some uh taste bud trickery going on there but as we probably suspected jack daniel's single barrel barrel strength oh it's just so good the nuttiness is still in there as well it's just yes this is this is everything you want from you know um this type of product and the problem is of course we're having to pay two three times the price maybe even four times the price sometimes of the old number seven for it which begs the question we were actually trying to answer which one do you buy now i think i could probably answer this in a probably not so helpful way if the price difference between the number seven and the bonded is more than ten percent it's not worth it because you could water down the bonded to taste exactly like this and I think whilst it does have some nice characteristics at 50% I actually think this is better weaker maybe not all the way down to the 40 but you know I don't think as a just a straight up product that's necessarily very good and I think it might be a bit overkill in cocktails and mixers as well which is where the number seven really reigns supreme so yeah let's you know if these are about the same price you can go for the strong one because you can water it down but otherwise old school number seven well it's it's you know it's the most famous whiskey the most strong whiskey in the world for a reason but if you can argue paying that much more for the single barrel barrel strength i think that really is the one and from my experience of general just you know single barrels before obviously i've had the silver select i've had a regular single barrel as well and i think they are just always that much better now if harsh stuff isn't for you go buy gentleman jack that's just this that's been filtered again which is why i'll be honest i don't really like it because i don't think there's enough flavor really in the number seven to start with yes it takes away some of the harsh notes but it doesn't leave you with an awful lot but in my opinion if you want a whiskey to sit down and consider and enjoy anything from the single barrel series is really the way to go but if you can get a decently priced bottle of the cast strength the barrel strength whatever that's called what is the official title of this single barrel barrel strength because that's not difficult to say after you've had a few um go for it because it is leaps and bounds ahead i mean there's no competition really but it was important to find out and we did. So that really is everything. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you'll be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.